Welcome to the basement. We've got some RCs laid out here and uh, what I'm hoping to do is put together a quick and concise uh, video uh, to help folks that may be interested in Nitro RC cars and uh, provide some uh, background on what I think is a good one to get into and why and uh, a lot of what I'm going to go through here applies to basically any type of RC car. Um, I think if you're also interested in getting into RC cars, this this might be helpful to you as well. And uh, just a couple of themes I want to mention right off the hop here is if you're looking to buy something used um, and, and you see ads popping up and stuff, um, th things that run through my mind are, you know, if, if there's a broken plastic part and... Th the uh the car itself is not discontinued and you can get parts plastics cheaper than steel or metal components so anything in the drivetrain is going to be more expensive than a minor broken plastic thing and then also your the heart of the of the car the motor is um that and the electronics will be the next most expensive thing within that vehicle so yeah let's jump into it here Okay, the first quick check I like to do is check the drivetrain for damage and anything that's obviously wrong with it that would be pretty cost prohibitive right off uh, the bat that would force me to walk away from any type of sale unless it was practically being given away for free. And so what we're going to do is just give it a quick roll test. And so what we're looking for is bent drive shafts, differential damage, um, clicking, anything that doesn't sound smooth. So everything, it, so uh, to check the, the front diff, just kind of hold the tire, give it a spin. There shouldn't be anything binding or any chunky feeling. Do the same to the rear. And while you're doing this, you're looking at the drive shafts to see if they're bananaed or not. And if they're true like this, those are all good things. And so we've, we've checked the, uh, the main output shafts and here's the main drive shafts. And so you can do the same thing here. Looking for bananas, making sure everything turns smoothly. And uh, these are some other good wear indicators you can kind of see on this diff cup. It's uh, it's had some, it's a serviceable part. They wear out, things look like that often. It wouldn't necessarily make me walk away from a sale for something like that. They're like five bucks. <clears throat> What's most important is that the diffs and whatnot are good. And speaking of diffs, I'm just gonna jump over to this other car. It's a little easier to show that on it. So right now we're looking at the rear diff of a HPI Savage. This is from the outside because uh, you're probably not going to be disassembling a used car. And what we're going to do is grab the rear drive axle and give it a wobble. You see how the cup's moving a little bit? Now that's pretty significant movement and what that means is there's a bearing in there that the differential rides on and it's likely throwing all the balls out of it and the issue with that is here's the differential kind of pulled out of one it's got these teeth and it's lined up with the pinion gear and if you can imagine if the bearing that carries this assembly is thrown out. It messes up the gear mesh and can basically chew the teeth right off these, cause irregular wear, and it's these are quite costly, especially um, um, like on a Savage, like the forged heavy-duty XL ones are about $90 Canadian to replace one um, pinion and ring gear. So that's quite quite an expensive part, something you want to check. So if you see a bunch of movement like this, that means that that bearing's gone and you might potentially want to walk away from that. Um, 
again, you can, you can do the turn the wheel, see if everything kind of feels smooth or um, ask to take the skid plate off so you can actually look at the gears itself. But that takes time. Um, and for sure, anything that's been run that where the rear diff is hopping around like that in the carriers for any significant period, it's definitely going to have irregular wear and impact the longevity. So that to me is a big one to consider walking away from. Uh, another thing that's certainly worth checking out is how true the chassis is. You should be able to just kind of have a look down the frame rails, make sure there's no significant bends or anything like that. You don't, if you can, if you can get all these parts, but you might as well not kind of a thing. So I'm just checking the frame rails. They're parallel. There's nothing funny going on. Okay. Okay, I've pulled out a buggy here. It's just a little bit easier to uh, kind of go through some of the nitro motor specific nuances when considering a used car. And you can kind of check the health of it by um, getting your finger on the flywheel. That's right here. And you can turn the engine over and I won't be able to do it on this one because it's pretty, I might be able to, it's pretty fresh. So you should have a lot of resistance. Um, just trying to turn that engine over by hand. And if you don't, uh, that means that that engine is likely near its service limit and uh, negotiation point. Um, other things to look for, it, it could be down on compression. It could be just worn out. It could have had you know debris get in it um basically heat and dirt kill these things and um that's one easy check some people say you can't check by turning the engine over but you definitely can like you 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 can feel it if it turns over easy um you know it's it's there's a cost there's going to be a cost associated with it so if you can gamble less all the better uh, another thing you're looking for is if it's wet um, near the front bearing, so there's a bearing right here that the uh, uh, supports the the crankshaft, and often over time they develop a weep. That weep turns into a leak, and then you start to see dirt build up here, and uh, the seal on that bearing starts to go. And what happens is the engine becomes very difficult to tune. So um, when it's in, when it's running. It might not idle properly and it might have irregular tuning behavior because uh, you've got a you've got a leak and it's messing with the tune a few other things noteworthy on say a savage is uh, this is a this is a dynamite or a lozy um, mock branded engine and it has a pull start on it um, the HPI engines, these are the force made engines, their back plate, um, this is something you can check. So the pull starts held on by these screws and uh, you can kind of see this um, metal back plate here. Now the, the back plate is quite undersized on the HPI engines or and, and what you'll end up seeing is where the rotor start is, these screws like to back out a little bit and they get some play and when folks are trying to start this engine, it actually starts to crack through the screw holes here and cause issues. Now that's something you can kind of inspect ahead of, ahead of time just by looking at it or knowing to look for that. It's not an issue on these Lozy engines, as you can see how skookum and over... I say it's over-designed, but I've never had an issue with one of them cracking through these screw holes and having issues um, keeping the start or the roto start assembly on the motor here another item worth checking is um, the air filter and one thing that I've noticed is sometimes this inner filter folks use the wrong size and it doesn't actually fit in here properly and it's not actually doing what it should be doing so if you see that this inner element isn't sealing appropriately against 
the caps, I would just walk away from it. Or again, if the price is right, like $75, go for it. But <clears throat> I'd walk away if either the air filter's missing or the wrong size was used. It just, it's not worth the headache in my opinion. So say the owner um, is, is going to fire it up, crank it up, and show you that everything works. So things that you want to watch for when it's running is that it can idle for at least 10 seconds between clearing out um, the engine. And what I mean by clearing out, these are two-cycle engines, so they run off a of fuel and oil mixture. And during idle, the oil builds up in the crankcase and it loads up the motor and it can stall from that oil. So uh, you, you fire it up, you'll hear it idling, and then you'll start to hear it start to kind of bog down. And so uh, a slow draw, I'll clear that out, and then it should continue to idle. So you'll, so if that behavior is kind of observed, then you know, then you've got a pretty good indication there's probably more life left in that motor. Um, and obviously if it runs good it holds a steady note it's responsive it's well behaved oh, those are all good things sometimes you're buying from somebody that doesn't know much about what it is that they have and you're you're gonna have to use your judgment i think the motor is always a gamble so just bear that in mind um, when you're negotiating the price another item that's fairly easy to check visually is the pinion and spur gear so this is the spur the bigger one I'll kind of try to point to it here bigger plastic gear sometimes they're metal and then the pinion is a metal gear that's driven off the engine and there's clutches in here that engages bell and turn this spur which goes to the transmission and transfers power to the wheels and you can kind of look in here and you can see, you know, the quality of the teeth, how the wear is doing. And, you know, if this is all looking pretty like pedal bike sprockety, again, that's another negotiation point. Um, quality ones of these, like a hardened appropriate one, you're looking at 25 bucks just to replace this bell. Uh, another item worth investigating is the fuel tank. Often these things can develop a crack from impacts and other nuances, and it's something pretty easy to check. You can you can pull out these two clips, and especially on these Savage tanks, really right on the inside in here, they like to crack because they're always wobbling around and hitting the the frame rail. I like to put a piece of foam in here to kind of dampen all that, but that's just another thing to be aware of. If you see a bunch of oil all over your tank um, it's another good indication that there might be a crack somewhere uh, contributing to that and so maybe take a deeper look it's going to do a quick electronics check here so i'll we'll turn her on you shouldn't hear really any bad noises everything should kind of move smoothly return And again, that's just a check if the batteries are charged and stuff and um, they can demonstrate that all that works good. That's even better. Um, just for example, like a, a mid-grade servo for steering, you're looking at 70 bucks for a throttle servo that's mid-grade, you're looking at about $70, $70 as well. So tires are good to check out. Um, you're looking for rips, tears, anything um of significance uh cracks on the hubs another item to note with um these savages is uh there's a one way bearing in the transmission and if it's working properly it should roll freely both forwards and backwards you might feel a little bit of brake pad drag that's fine but if it doesn't roll backwards at all there's definitely an issue there okay first budget 
Nitro RC car. Why do I think it should be an HPI Savage? Specifically X series and later generations. Um, this this platform, when it came out in 2003, 2004, it totally changed the face of the industry. Everybody was trying to catch basically this. This was the car. It was the king of the hill. And it dominated the monster truck kind of um, versatile class for probably at least 10 years until um, there was other realistic competition within this field. Uh, nothing was tougher. Nothing was... Uh, from the price point out of the box, there there really wasn't any, and and its its popularity kind of shows that. And if if you go on a search, you'll probably find a bunch of these for sale all the time wherever you, wherever you're looking, and 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 that's part of the reason that they were very popular. Lots of folks had them, and uh, HPI's back, so they were gone for a couple of years, and now they're producing parts again, and they're maintaining the Savage line which is basically this car in front of you. This is an XL, the extended. It's a little bit bigger than the Savage X, but um, they're still making parts for these. And the parts are cheap. They've got support. So if you could get one of these for like 200 Canadian, like I, I don't think you can go wrong. Uh, I mean, a new one is 700 and it'll have warranty. And uh, back in 2004, when I first bought mine, new in box, HPI was great to deal with. I. I had an engine grenade on me and they sent me a new one. So like you can, to each their own, you can go new, get the warranty, or you can go for 50% less <laughs> or more and go with something to use with some of these tips. And I think you'd be pretty happy. Um, really the biggest gamble on these things is uh, the metal components, so drive line and the engine. And if you can kind of uh, rule some of that stuff out, I think you can have yourself a very... Uh, fun RC to, uh, to start and tinker with and uh, definitely reach out to your uh, whoever's local around you to kind of help you out. It can be a bit of a steep learning curve, these nitros, um, but there's lots of videos out there to help and uh, hopefully you find this one useful. Thanks and bye for now. Oh, and P.S. I want to hear your uh, your um, your horror stories like you bought something and you totally missed this and there was this issue i want to know i want to know what was the worst tell me what the worst thing is that you, you ever bought and why i've definitely had a few i've i've had some duds for engines and whatever but again the price point i wasn't too fussed about it but yeah put it down in the comments uh, i want to know it'll probably help other people that wisdom acquired through um potential failures. <laughs> Thanks. Bye.